While natural variations in wool produce special characteristics, they can cause problems in manufacturing. Dr John Hickford from Lincoln University is identifying the genetic basis of differences in wool fibre characteristics to better control them. And we've created our own flock of sheep which span through from fine to mid-micron and then we've got a separate flock of crossbred sheep as well up at Oxford that we're looking at wool stuff on as well. So you were spanning the whole industry because we're trying to get a, a better connection between what we actually see on the sheep's back and, and the underlying gene. The key thing is we know wool is a highly variable natural product and, and that variation comes about for a variety of reasons, some genetic, some environmental. And we're, we're asking the question of whether we can get better control over the genetic variation in wool so that we can get a more consistent product and a product that the manufacturer's processes would place a higher value on. And the overall program is to enhance the value of wool which you know, is something ultimately we need in New Zealand. But um, it's divided into small parts and, and this part of the project is to better understand the genes that produce the proteins that actually create the wool fibre. So we here at Lincoln are working uh, on the genes and trying to understand the genetic variation that, that um, changes the wool proteins. Across the road at, at AgResearch they're trying to understand the proteins that um, um, make, actually constitute the wool fibre. Fibre diameter obviously has a huge impact on wool value, but of course you can control that with breeding and um, there's still natural variation even once you, you, know, you get down to ultra fine sheep, there's still variation in fibre diameter which is under genetic control. Um, colour, yep, certainly an interesting trait and one that we're working on, the lustre, the actual brightness of the wool. Also trying to control the staple strength, so the actual intrinsic strength of the fibre. So this is uh, one of the trial Merino Southdown cross sheep and they're being bred specifically to give us variation in wool traits with the, the cross of the down and longer wool Merino breed. It's about a medium fibre, um, averaging between 21 and 23 micron here. Um, quite a large variation in bulk and quite a large variation in staple strength which um, some of the traits that we're looking at. Um, what you can see here is that uh, late last week we took a a mid-side patch of wool off. The stitch you can see here is where we've taken a skin biopsy out of the side of the lamb under anaesthetic and that skin's now going to go and be analysed to see which wool genes are actually being expressed. So what's, what genes are actually ending up producing the fibre that we see in this lamb. These are wool samples of the sheep that we farm down here at Ashley Dean, the Merino cross sheep. It's to illustrate the point this really that even though these are out of the same ram, these, these two lambs, they're two different wool samples, and these lambs have grown up in the same paddock, never been apart, um, always probably within a few hundred metres of each other, and therefore on the same nutritional plane we expect. There's quite a large variation in staple strength. Now, historically we know staple strength is in part controlled by nutrition, but we would hope in this situation that the, the nutrition is quite controlled, uh, and therefore the variation in staple strength has some underlying genetic component. So if you, if you compare the two samples, um, this, this is, is tender fleece here, um, this is probably under 25 newtons strength and if you pull that, it'll break at one place where it's tender and you can see that break point there. What's happened in that break point is both reduction in fibre diameter but also the, the intrinsic strength of the fibre is reduced, so it's broken at one point. Um, Similar lamb, okay, I probably couldn't pick the difference in the paddock here, but if we pull this fibre here, um, well, the point stands. <laughs> I can't pull that apart. The big challenge from synthetics is that you can um, produce a synthetic fibre of uniform length, uniform strength, uniform colour, uniform lustre, all those things. You can sort of dial that into a machine and produce that. With wool, you can't control those things. So anything that allows you to um, sort of increase the um, consistency with which the wool comes off a sheep's back is, is a good thing. It gives you more options. This program was made with funding from New Zealand On Air.